Hi, I'm Mara Webster with InCreative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be talking to Casey Wolfel all about the CW's Naomi. And I wanted to, to start by diving back to your initial process in terms of auditioning for this role, because obviously for, for any lead role in a TV show, there were several different rounds and, and it all started with a self-tape that you did. And, you know, I always think it's such a fascinating part of the journey in terms of how little you have in terms of character detail at that point um, and kind of what your inroad is to understanding them. And so how did you approach kind of how you viewed Naomi as a character, who you thought she was and, and the choices that you ended up making for that self-tape? Yeah, I got the audition and I kept reading it. I remember it was like 10 PM when I got it too. And I never really get auditions at the nighttime and I was reading it and I was like, I was reading everything about the email. And I was like, this, this is like a dream project. And I was like, whoever books this genuinely, I say this all the time, whoever books this, I'm going to be so proud of them. And it ended up being me, which is really funny. But I remember the character description was actually, there was a lot of information in it. And for it to be, I don't go up for many, I didn't go up for le many lead roles before that. So the character description was great. It talked about her AP extracurriculars. It talked about her family life. It talked about um, her personality and how confident she was. And then you go into the sides and you see I, the first, I think, there were a couple rounds that I did. The first self tape was three scenes, but the scenes were all different. And I just felt really connected to her. And I first, at first I was like, I'm gonna do exactly what I think Miss Ava wants to see. But I didn't know what, I didn't know Miss Ava at the time. So I didn't know what she wanted to see. But so I remember taking the time and being like, here's my approach to the character. I see this character as someone who's competent, someone who is charismatic. And I thought about the other people in my life who are like that. So I remember I did the self tape and actually took me a lot of takes to do it, honestly. And I sent it in and I didn't think any, anything of it. I was like, okay, it was, it was really fun self tape to do and whoever books this is gonna be great. And then I got a pinned email and then, you know, you can get, you can be pinned and then you can get unpinned. So I stayed pinned and I did a producer session with Ms. Ava and that was five different scenes. And being someone who had, didn't go up for lead roles, I wanted to show sort of, especially like with lead characters, when you watch TV shows, you want to see difference in each scene. You don't want to see the same person based on the circumstance. So I remember each scene I gave a word, which really, I had never done that before, which was really, really helpful to me to see a different side of a character where she's scared, where she's confiding in someone. So I remember each scene for the producer session, I gave a word. And I ended up, there wasn't a guarantee that you were going to do all the scenes, but I ended up doing all the scenes. And I was like, oh, okay. She liked that one. She liked that one. Okay. Okay. We're getting, we're getting closer here. And then I did, um, I did the, 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 one of the final scenes. And then she asked me a couple questions. And then I jumped off the call and I was like, I just got to meet Ava DuVernay. Like I was, I was just so satisfied with that. I always say like my teachers in school always say this too, like, once you present the best, especially as an actor, once you present the best version of yourself, then that's it. Like they can, they, they can take it, they can love it. But once you present the best version of yourself and you're, you feel like you've done your best work in like an audition or just in your work, then it's out of like other people, it's out of your hands, you know, you can be satisfied with that. So I was really satisfied with that when I got off the Zoom with her. And I remember I was just like laying in my bed after <laughs> like, just was like turning on some Netflix show and was like laying in my bed and my mom called me and was like we're going to LA tomorrow and I was like what um so we went to LA and I had the lunch with Miss Ava and we talked about the show and I still hadn't booked it and me and her and my mom had lunch and then I did zoom chemistry reads which is ch challenging because zoom chemistry read is challenging but um I got to work with some great actors and then from there, I think, I think the Zoom chemistry read actually was 20 pages of sides. So it's funny because it's like when you're, when you're in, I would get them, it was almost like a test, you know, um, you have to lead roles. So you're gonna have to learn a lot and memorize your lines. So I think, I think it was like 20 or 25 pages and um, then I booked it. <laughs> That's amazing. And then obviously, you know, you were filming this first season over the course of, of several months and, and typically the final scripts aren't even written when you start shooting at the beginning. And so you don't have all of those details, but because kind of Naomi's learning in real time, a lot of details about her past, where she comes from, you know, certain aspects that she's been looking for answers. 
in? Was it, were there details that were kind of necessary for you to know about where her journey was going? Were there things that you wanted to ask the creative team or was it very much about kind of going with the scripts as they came to you episode by episode? I think it's a really great thing when, um, you know, creators of a show or writers of a show or like people, you know, a part of the show, the producers, they tell you things that you need to know. And then they don't tell you things that you don't, because sometimes as an actor, what I would do is I would get the scripts for the next episode while I was filming a certain episode. And I wouldn't read them till the weekend because I would get so caught up in that. And it would affect my choices based on the episode because I would be like, I know this is coming, but Naomi doesn't know that it's coming. So I mostly didn't ask about the future. And if I did, Jill Blankenship, um, who was one of the co-creators would be like, I'm not telling you, Casey. <laughs> like she would be like, I'm not telling you, which I'm, I'm actually really, really grateful for. But I think what I did talk to them a lot about is the past, because you meet these characters and when you're watching shows, you want people to feel like full people. And like, you're not like, they're just created for the first time. You want to have a backstory, even if it's not in the script, just as an actor, it's really, really helpful. So I talked to them and then I also, you know, did my own work and there's things that things that people, I probably wrote the most ridiculous things that no one who's watching the show could ever, could ever know, but it, it helped me. It helped me like what her favorite color is, or just all, all that just makes you feel so much more connected to a character. I also wanted to talk about Naomi's confidence. You know, you were bringing that up as one of the very early things that that you really connected to with her as a character. And there's kind of two different journeys of confidence. There's the going to high school as a 16 year old, kind of figuring out who she is, but but being someone who's very confident within herself and, and her, her identity, her friendships, her relationships around herself, which is so beautiful to watch. And then there's the side of her when she finds out that she has superpowers and it kind of throws her off balance at the beginning and kind of knocks her confidence in certain ways. And then at the same time, it also instills this new sense of confidence that she didn't have before in a completely completely different arena. And so how did you kind of think about and shape those two different journeys that she's going on in terms of self-confidence within herself? Yeah, I remember she's a complete different person than she is in episode one versus like episode seven or something. Um, you know, you meet her and she's this, I remember when I was with pilot first came out, people were saying that she was just so like perfect mm -hmm. and that she had no flaws. And I was like, You'll see. She's very, in, she's, she has insecurities like everyone else. So I think that I always thought of her confidence and I always think of, you know, people who are not always super confident. This isn't always true, but especially in high school, it's sometimes a facade and it was a facade for her. And this superhero thing really breaks down the internal thing. So I think I kind of almost thought about it as two different worlds. And later, you know, as the superhero, how she has no confidence in herself and keeps losing all these battles that affects her school life and her personal life and makes her less confident. But I think, especially towards the end of the season, you see that she sort of gains that confidence back. And it was funny because I was sort of going through that as an actor, <laughs> you know, a lot of times actors and not, this is not, I'm not speaking for all actors, but you know, we can be insecure with our work. And since I'm so, since I'm 17, it was my first lead role. It was almost like, you know, Naomi has this challenge that she has to do. And I also have this challenge that I have to do in schoolwork and, you know, all of that. So it, it was sort of like our lives were kind of aligning. So I did pull a little bit from myself and, you know, trying to have that confidence within my work, what I was doing at the time, and then also just Naomi having that confidence within her superpowers. No, it's, and it's so amazing to, to have that opportunity and, and to be taking on that experience of it being your first lead role, um, you know, and also culminating all of the experience that you've had in the industry over several years already auditioning, appear, you know, filming things on camera. What were some of the things that were more challenging than you expected them to be taking on a lead role? And what were some of the things where it felt like a very natural space to you because of the work that you've done before? Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things. I think what felt really natural is like the sense of family you know, and I'm so blessed to work on that set, especially with a Ray crew and everything that Miss Ava does, because you just feel so safe with your crew members and you see people that look like you and people that look like, like in positions that you've never seen before. And it's, it's really inspiring. So, but I did a lot of theater work before I did any TV work, really. And I think that that you know, when you do a show, it's really a sense of family. Of course, when you do a TV show or a movie, it's a sense of family. But when you do a show, you're with those people 
every single night. You're putting on the same show. You have time backstage. It's just a family. Like everyone who has done a Broadway show or off Broadway or any type of theater knows that. And so that sense of family was something that came really natural. This is going to sound, and then this other thing that came really natural is going to sound a little bit funny. You know, a lot of times when you have to do emotional scenes, you think of them as like this huge, big thing. And sometimes as actors, you know, you focus on, you sort of focus on crying sometimes when you do scenes more than you focus on the true emotion. And that can overshadow the scene because you're like, I need to cry. And I know that feeling so much. But something that actually came really natural for me for the show was like, crying like I always used to think of it as like the hardest thing to do as an actor and people see it as something that's super um you know people react to it because it's something that is like coming out of you as a person when you're doing a scene but I think because I was so connected to the character and I built the character so much and with the help of Jill and Miss Ava um with the scenes it just was like I was her so it felt so natural and I was like this is easy and then they just kept having me do it so I was like this has to be easy. So it, it, that is something that sort of came natural from that. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, but I think what was sort of the challenge for me was, you know, crafting a character who's so new too, and um, bringing my own qualities into it while also staying respectful to the comic and respectful to the material. So there are certain things that I did, especially in the beginning of the show, um, with my facial movements or my body movements. She always has her hands in her pockets during this during the um during during the comic book. She always has her hands in her pockets. And I think that that's just so interesting. And so I tried to do a little bit of that, which was which was challenging. And then it was also challenging, you know, leading a show. You know, you have to work with new directors every episode. And of course we had a great producing director, Domain Davis, who helped with that, but you sort of have to lead the show. And I had to lead the show being the youngest person there. But obviously everyone took me seriously. No one treated me like a baby, which was really, really helpful. But um, you sort of have to, lead a show at, at 17. Yeah, I mean, I, I going back to what you were just saying about the relationship with her as a character, I really love that detailing and that connection as well. And, and it also kind of comes down to when you're working on a show and you're working this many hours, having that connection when you need to, and then still being able to take those moments to step away. And I wanted to ask you about um, Sierra Renee, who you said has been like a real mentor to you going through this process and how she really helped you to kind of find that balance and to allow yourself those moments where you're stepping away from the work, because that's just as important as the work that you are doing. Yeah, I actually worked with Sierra. She's a she's a Broadway girl too, and I consider myself I study musical theater in school too. So I consider myself like a Broadway girl, and I was on Broadway when I was younger. And um, I do this uh, program that is like for artists in high school and things like that, extracurricular. And they sort of signed me up with a mentor between when we shot the pilot and the first season. So. I, I remember seeing her and I was like, oh. she was just in Frozen. And then I was like, wait, no, she they set me up with her because she was in Legends of Tomorrow. And she knows that. And I wrote my first um, my first short film with her and she, she mentored me in writing and directing, not in acting. But what she really, when I told her about the role, I remember she made me make a list of five things that help make me happy, that isn't in electronics, that isn't, that's something that I can do every day when I get home. And I remember at the time being like, okay, I have this five list. I'm not going to, I don't know. I, my job makes me so happy. I'm, I, you know, I appreciated it, but I didn't really, until I got there and started doing the, the first season, I really, really took that to heart because even Javicia Leslie, who plays Batwoman, she is so adamant to me about that and just really taking time because when you take time for yourself it affects everyone on the crew. Your number one affects everyone, truly, truly. So when you are your best self and present your best self at work and it's genuine, everybody else will. So I think that, you know, taking time for yourself, especially, and especially giving yourself grace too. But she was really, really adamant about that and really adamant about speaking up for myself and just giving myself time to relax on the weekends and rewind and still take my work super seriously. I really love that. And and then also wanted to go back to some of the elements that you were speaking about with Naomi as a character before in terms of, of the physical body language with her, because that also transfers over into how do these powers manifest? What does it look like 
you know, when that becomes a part of her body, um, you know, cause obviously any effects that are happening are not there in the moment that you're shooting the scene. And so how did you find what her movement was going to be as a character when her powers are at play? Yeah, I remember that I saw something that Melissa Benoist, who plays Supergirl, they have like, and some, so I don't, I think this is like a professional job and I didn't know that, that you can like, um, and I think Elizabeth Olsen was talking about it for WandaVision, that they have people who teach you the superpowers and like can teach you like superpower trainers. And I remember it saying like, that's really cool, but also I want to sort of explore that myself as someone who is a superhero fan, you know, buying things like that and seeing, buying them on the screen and really saying like that, that feels natural, even though there are a bunch of visual effects behind it. So Naomi gets a new power almost like every episode. And as we are approaching the end of the season, it, it gets, it gets even crazier. Like you have no idea, but I first started it. I was talking to the stunt coordinator and she has this sort of thing of energy. And th- at the time, there were only a couple Justice Leagues with her, with her and her, her Naomi comic. So I knew that she always had her hands out. And when we first started exploring her powers, I was just flipping through the comic books like every single day because I wanted to pay tribute to that. And so when I was first doing it, um, I put a lot of physical pressure on myself. Like I was always, I would do it and I would breathe really hard and it would almost make me dizzy. And I would like have to sit down after the takes because I was so dizzy with doing it. Cause I'm like an actor where I want things to be real all the time, even if superpowers are not real. Um, but I am actually super grateful for that because I think if I knew exactly what I wanted the powers to be, it wouldn't be as natural because Naomi's first discovering her powers. So me being out of breath and it not looking as polished is super great to see on TV because it's not polished for her. So, you know, exploring it and also finding new ways to, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, finding new ways to see these superpowers that we've seen, or also just take inspiration from other people um, is, is, it's really fun, but it can, it can, it can mess with your brain a little bit. Cause you're like, I'm do not have supervision. I'm looking at a dot on the camera. <laughs> um, but you know, just taking yourself in and using your imagination as much as you can, which is a great thing to do as an actor. And is really fun when you're playing somebody like a superhero. I also really love getting to watch the relationship dynamic that you've created alongside Alexander Wraith, who plays D on the show, because I think that's such a fascinating connection between the two of them, you know, kind of, again, with what you were saying about her being such a different character at the end, that relationship dynamic as well at the beginning, that's someone that she has complete mistrust in and now is one of her biggest confidants. And she knows that he doesn't have the answers to everything, which is also really interesting to watch, but yet she looks to him very much for guidance guidance in terms of of general approach and day to day. And even the fact that he's a very energy centered character is something that, you know, he instills upon her. And so what are the things that you wanted to start to adopt into her as a character that she's really taking from that relationship from D and everything that he's instilling in her? There are almost complete opposites especially when you first meet them like you have this teenage girl who's like 16 super social like asks a bunch of questions speaks really fast and then you have like this guy who's like I don't even know how old he is I've been I asked Alex once I forget like he's many years old and he's an alien he has like no friends and he's just quiet and he talks about his anxiety all the time which I love talking about somebody like in a superhero show talking about their anxiety and all of that um but I think what she really adopts from D is sort of a sense of family too he becomes before Zumbato he becomes her family and the one person that she can go to and she knows that he doesn't have all the answers it's not like Superman he's she he's he doesn't have all the answers but he's they're also they're complete opposites but you see that they're somewhat alike towards the end they have great similarities and they have a great connection he was the only person to ever tell her he was the only all these other people around her knew and he was the first person to tell her and helped her and stuck beside her and just genuinely loves her and i almost think of like zumbato and d as like her two dads um, or like her uncles or something. And I love that relationship that she has with Dee so much because they teach each other so much. He teaches her about meditation and how to be calm and how to fight. 
and she teaches him to laugh. Like it's it's so great to see a character like that and to do those scenes with Alex. Cause me and Alex are like, com- have a completely different like friendship versus like Naomi and Dee. And um, it's, it's, it's so fun to work with him with that and craft it. And I remember when I first read the comic book, I could even see that the first conversation that they have is very tense in the comic book. And then she combines it in. You know, and you're also bringing up that aspect of Naomi as a character where she's very inquisitive and she always asks questions. She's very curious about things around her. Um, and in the way that you've talked about the experience of working on the show, it sounds like it was a really safe space to also do that as a performer, as yourself, and, and to ask a lot of questions about character, to come to the table with ideas. You know, here's how I think she would respond to this particular situation and, and having that space and opportunity to try things, even if the first choice doesn't work. Okay, maybe now we'll try it this way. And what's the difference that that makes for you as a performer in working in an environment like that, where everyone's so open to the collaborative element of it, where everybody has input, everybody has ideas, and there is that space to try different trajectories and and different emotional beats and scenes. I'm a very... um... It's very hard for me to ask questions in a warm up. Like I'll have things in the back of my brain and it's almost like, you know, people, you got to open up your mouth to get fed. Like you have to say something to fully fulfill yourself. So I, although it was an environment where of course I can do that, I had a little struggle with that in the beginning. And as I was, as people just encouraged me to speak up more and there was nothing I really needed to speak up about. It was just really just like my choices or, Hey, I just wouldn't feel like she would say this line here. Or I just have a really quick question. Joe Blankenship is like one of my favorite people, one of my favorite creatives. She's just so open to just everyone, not just me, like my other castmates would call her about a line and would really sit there. And if there was a moment that I was like, I don't know about this moment. And we would spend moments, like we would spend like 30 minutes on the phone or like an hour on the phone talking about maybe just one scene or one moment. And I would call her all the time and I'd be like, hey, Jill, I'm so sorry to bug you. I have a question. Or even just Miss Ava. I remember during the pilot, Miss Ava and I had maybe an hour and a half conversation. Just um, this is in like the middle of shooting too about like a scene or just the character. Miss Ava calls her the queen of questions. Naomi, she calls Naomi the queen of questions. So being open to that and then also working with directors and you know, still staying respectful to people's work, but also remembering that you are the person in the body of the character and you are here to represent the character. And I'm so grateful again to everybody, a part of the creative, because they really, whether it was a choice I wanted to try and it didn't even work, they would just, they would let me play, which um, while still staying on time, let me play. But I really appreciate that because then that's where I got to find true character and learn to speak up for myself. Well, it's so wonderful hearing all the details that went into creating this really fantastic character and can't wait to see the continued journey of where she goes at the end of of season one and hopefully for many more seasons. Thank you so much, Casey. Thank you.